Welcome to Human Potential at Work, the show where we explore social impact, inclusion, and empowerment of everyone, including persons with disabilities. Your host is Deborah Rue, CEO of Rue Global Impact and co-founder and chairwoman of Billion Strong, an identity and empowerment organization designed to bring billions of voices of persons with disabilities together. To join the global community and to donate to the cause, visit billion-strong.org. That's billion-strong.org. And now on to the episode. Hello, everyone. My name is Deborah Rue, and this is Human Potential at Work. And I'm so excited to have my guest today. I always am, but I really am. One of them is a returning guest. He's been on, actually, this is his third time. I'm a big fan of Stefan Lebois. And he is now with The Valuable 500, which I've talked about a lot in... Dr. Caroline Casey's been on the show, and we're so proud to be partnering with them. And also the lovely and amazing Crosby Cromwell, which is, she's a very well-known leader throughout the world and certainly here in the United States. So welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thrilled to be with you. It's great yeah. to be back. Hi, Deborah. Yes. Yeah, I'm the rookie of the group. I think it's my first time <laughs> to be right. having so a we're conversation. We're going to start with you, because <laughs> uh, yeah, so it'll be real easy. We'll have fun. <laughs> but do you mind giving the the audience, t- tell us who you are. Tell us how you got in the field. Who is Crosby Cromwell? Because you've had a very interesting career, the parts that I know. So, Good Lord, who is Crosby Cromwell? That's a big question. But no, <laughs> thrilled to be here um, today. So I'm the Chief Partnerships Officer for The Valuable 500. I identify as a person with a disability, which has been a journey for me. I started in this field 20 years ago, identifying as an ally through my mother's story. And over the course of time, have realized my own journey with uh, mental health, both depression and, and anxiety. I started off in the nonprofit sector, focused on disability and workforce and then was picked up by Walmart to build their first national and global disability platform and was with the company for seven and a half years where I got to meet amazing people like Deb and then have been on the outside since working from a DEI lens with companies. Really proud to be with the Valuable 500 and on this team and in this company that we'll be talking a bit about today. Oh, I, I appreciate and that you came right out talking about your identity. One thing that I keep forgetting to do is for the audience members that are blind or vision impaired is identify ourselves. So I am a white woman with faded purple and gray hair. I need to put some more purple in there. And I'm wearing I, what I thought was this really cool necklace with pearls and gold. And so Crosby, let me turn that. Sure. Oh, and Deb, thank you for that call out. So I today I am in a turquoise sweater, which my UK colleagues would call a jumper. I have long red hair. I'm sitting in my apartment in Washington, D.C and what I say is skin that will always burn in the sun. Okay, Stefan. Stefan, will you reintroduce yourself to the audience? Sure, sure. Uh, so I'm Stefan Lebois. I'm the director of uh, partnerships at the Valuable 500. Deb had me on uh, the last time I was on, Deb. I think I was uh, at the Ark of the United States, if my memory serves. It's a wonderful organization uh, that supports the rights of uh, persons with intellectual and developmental disabilities. I also, like Crosby, come from the uh, nonprofit uh, and disability rights sector. And I have about 10, 10 years of experience that spans across a variety of different areas within the sector, uh, ranging from digital accessibility to inclusive education to inclusive employment and so on. I joined the Valuable 500, I guess it's six months ago now at Crosby, or five months ago, a relatively new fixture at the organization, but we're doing wonderful things. As a audio description of myself, I'm a basic looking white dude with with glasses and graying hair with a brown partition as my background. I have a blue, faded blue gray shirt on. I, w- I think we should do the description. So I will describe you and I will describe <laughs> But uh, th- that is such an important thing. And one of my one of my coworkers is blind. And I said to her, we, we had it at a team meeting once. And I said, what do you think about it? Is it cheesy? And she's anytime people do that, I am so grateful. She said, I'm just so grateful. And as a matter of fact, when they do it, I go and I follow them on LinkedIn because it just makes me feel more included. And I thought, remember to do it, Deborah. Mm-hmm. Remember to do it. So thank y'all. But let's all talk. Let, let's talk again. Even though we have talked about the Valuable Five Hundred on pa- in the past, I've had Dr. Caroline Casey on. I will also say that Stefan is actually this is his third time 
the first time I had him on, he was a student. He was really where he was working on his master's degree. And we were talking about it from youth lens. And he is still a very, I know he feels old sometimes with his gray hair, but he's definitely <laughs> premature gray hair. And we'll put those links so that you can go back and see how he has, uh, his career is shifting. But let's talk about the valuable 500 because I, I don't, I know probably a lot of my audience is familiar with it, but T tell us what the 500, the Valuable 500 is. Sure, no, happy to. So the Valuable 500 was founded by Caroline Casey, who Deb has mentioned. We were launched at Davos in 2019. So Caroline has been in this space and building campaigns and issues and important topics around this space for 20 years. But Valuable 500 was launched at Davos with the idea that disability has been moving too low, too slow for too long because the highest levels of leadership have not been at the helm of the conversation, meaning CEOs. So we're a collection of 500 CEOs who've brought their 500 global companies along with them to say that disability inclusion matters. So each of them have um, come on board, have a specific action statement that they're driving forward, as well as being a part of the collective. And so I know we're gonna be talking more about what we're doing specifically, but really these 500 companies are moving forward together over the course of the next three years under our transformation program, really looking at how change across the disability value chain can be advanced when done collectively. Ooh, so powerful. I know that when I sat on the USBLN Now Disability Ends board for years and you were heavily engaged in those conversations, we were always talking about how do we get the CEOs in the conversation. Remember? We were yes. always talking about that. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and then this woman from Ireland just decided <laughs> she could we do were it. Bring 500 corporations together. It's ridiculous. You can't. Yeah. Do that? It is a part of her superpower. The, the rooms that she can get disability, the disability conversation into is a part of why Valuable 500 is who it is. Yeah, she's amazing. And, and the thing I, I love about her and also about both of you is that you're very authentic. You mm -hmm. want it to be a win for everybody. And we actually, I think more of us need to act this way because we are in this together. There's plenty for everybody. There's plenty for everybody. But I know some people think the Valuable 500 was just a one-time marketing campaign. And the good news is y'all did one win a Lions Cans Award for your Diversious commercial, which was so clever. But do you do people still think it is a marketing campaign? I, I think, and Stefan, both of us on this, I think a lot of people do. One, maybe fairly just from a lack of, of understanding or from a lack of, for a position of where the Valuable 500 has been. So Valuable 500 really did start as this camp campaign of trying to gather these 500 companies. But the intent behind it was once the companies were announced and we announced those companies on May 18th of this year, it was about what we all go do together. And that's not just the Valuable 500 at the helm, but that is a slew of global B2B solution providers that we'll be talking about. That is our expert friends in the global disability community. Valuable 500 is a convener and a connector. And there are specific things that we are doing to drive this conversation forward. And Stefan and I, Stefan and I come from the programmatic world. Disability and advancing it in a workplace setting is why I get up in the morning. It's what I care about. And so the realness behind who Valuable 500 is and what we're doing is 100% here. And we also happen to have this brilliant collective experience inside of folks who come from the marketing world. So we're trying to get disability to look different than it has in the past, to look more like it really actually is, and to sound different, to sound more like disability actually is, which is nuanced and layered and fun and sexy and smart and all these things that disability hasn't gotten to be at a high enough level. So that's where we are. Yeah, oh, gosh, if, I love that comment. It, <laughs> if, I, if I could add to that, Please so do. Crosby summarized it beautifully and, and, and I'll say that initially you're right, Deb, like it, it, from the outside looking in, it, it was a campaign because it was. We were trying to get 500 CEOs from across the, the world to think differently about disability and to commit to, make, to to change, which is huge. It's a huge undertaking and it required, I, I can't even begin to describe how difficult it was for a long time to get folks to sign on, but we did it. And, and Crosby alluded to it earlier, we have an outstanding communications and marketing team who were really in the engine room 
driving this campaign forward. In addition to the campaign, in addition to signing people on, there was this constant undercurrent of educating. There was this constant undercurrent of CEOs talking to one another. We had, we were fortunate to, to have very early on commitments and support from some of the world's biggest CEOs, like Paul Pullman from Unilever, Richard Branson, Folks like that who were starting to talk to other CEOs using their personal Rolodexes to be like, hey, you should really sign on to this. This is important. And I think so in addition to that campaign, the sign on campaign, there is also an undercurrent of education and awareness raising and understanding about the business case of this stuff. It's so powerful. It's just so powerful. And also the partners that stepped in to help. And that's one thing that I love about Caroline's work. She has a very interesting background and she collaborates. She's a collaborator. She's a partner and she really believes in partnerships and the people that she's hiring on the team, all I can tell have the same authentic nature. And so I'm really excited about who is on the team, but at the same time, you have 500 corporations now looking at you to lead them forward. And I know our community of people with disabilities desperately need y'all to be successful. So we need to make sure you're successful by supporting you. But how does it work? I have a couple, I have multiple questions. I want to talk about how you recommend vendors. Do you recommend vendors and how would you do that? But I'm also curious about I know as one of the expert partners from the beginning that was trying to get the U.S. to get engaged, which was very interesting. But at the end, the U.S. came in very proudly. So we just were a little distracted by some political things over there. But how is it? I'm also curious about things like, is it closed? What if I still want to join? And things like that. There's a lot of moving parts, but... The other thing I worry, I, I wonder about, and I know the answer, but you have organizations in countries like you have Enable India, you've got Access Israel, you've got National Organization on Disability in the States or WID, World Institute in the Disability in the States. I'm just also curious how all of that comes together because I know the Valuable 500 isn't trying to replace what anybody else is doing. So I'm throwing a lot at you. Yeah. Um, no, I'll Stefan, do you want me to take um, the are we open and then the, the you take the recommendations and vendors and that piece? Yeah. Sorry, so, I threw a lot at you, but no, it's a I think... really complicated <laughs> thing and I want to make sure um, that we cover these things. Yeah. And I'm really grateful that y'all um, let me interview you on this too. No, it's an important conversation to have and, and yeah, there's so many pieces to cover today, but we did announce our 500 companies on the 18th and then quickly realized that we had multiple brands that could roll back up into their parent companies and create space. So if there are companies that are interested, we want to have those conversations. We also believe really deeply that this should be a living, breathing, much like the Fortune 500 or the FTSE 100. If a company in good faith is not moving forward on their commitment, if we're not seeing a connection, if we're not collaborating, that Fortune 500 companies can roll out because this is not pay for play. And it matters and it has to be impact at the end of the day. But 100% open to conversations. We're trying to actively move companies in right now. So yeah, happy to have our contact information be out there. And that these corporations want to do it. That is such leadership. That is yeah. amazing. Yeah. So going back to um, what I was saying uh, previously, in addition to us being in campaign mode during what we call phase one, right, prior to signing on that 500th company and really starting phase two, which is activating that community, we leaned heavily on folks like you, Deb, and folks like Access Israel, Enable India, trusted partners that became really the backbone and lent their shoulders to, to, to pushing this forward. And really from the get-go, we have never been a standalone shop. We don't believe in that. We're conveners, we're collaborators, we're connectors. I remember during my interview for the Valuable 500, Caroline knew my background as a disability inclusion consultant. She was like, okay, when you join, just remember, you're no longer a consultant. That's not what you do anymore. So leave that part of you behind. Keep, use that knowledge to make good decisions and to recommend good partners and good solutions. But at the end of the day, you know, it is our responsibility to connect the disability inclusion specialists out there in the field with our companies. And that sets up nicely to what you were talking about, Deb, which is, you know, how we're doing that. So 
we're in the process of finalizing our first class of what we call our uh, vendor directory, our solution partner directory. And what that is a global directory of disability inclusion specialists from a variety of different expertise, ranging from you know, digital accessibility to the built environment, to inclusive hiring, to governance, to you name it. All the different parts. All the different parts, parts. all the different components of the disability inclusion ecosystem in, in corporate. And, and that directory will basically serve as a, a yellow pages, an Angie's, an Angie's list, if you will, if you want to take a US-based reference for companies who are looking for help. And we, Crosby and I, we field conversations daily from our companies saying, okay, so we made this commitment. Now what, where do we go? Who can help us? And so this directory is part of solving that issue. At the same time, that directory, we're starting out small. We want, we, with the number of folks who are gonna be in it simply because we don't want to create a directory of a thousand you know, different organizations and cause one decision paralysis from our companies and two, not have enough opportunity for everybody to enjoy. So we want to start off small. We want to make sure that the, the concept is proven before expanding. And our main objectives are to find folks who have a business disability pedigree. So have you know supported businesses before and have a demonstrated uh, track record of lending their expertise to people and providing good solutions and positive impact. And Deb, you are among the, the experts, the ex external uh, panel of experts that we actually included in our decision-making process. We sent out an RFP back in August or in uh, July and then had folks apply. And this external panel actually helped us pick who was going to who was going to be in the directory and we thought in the spirit of nothing about us without us in the spirit of you know peer collaboration and trying to be as uh, equitable as possible we engage folks from the community who know the community better than anybody to support us in this endeavor and so we're pretty happy with where we've ended up we're about to announce that uh, directory later on this month but we're really excited and again thank you deborah for being part of that process with us yeah it I, I loved the process. It was very interesting to participate in it and to see the homework y'all did behind the scenes. Because mm -hmm. I, I was really surprised at the amount of data that we got. And I almost sometimes a little intimidated. So I make the right decision just because this is a very important decision. So I liked that you did that and you brought in global advisors. So you brought in people from all over the world because uh, the cultures are all thinking differently. So I loved that. Deb, can I add two pieces to that? I mean, Stefan said it all beautifully. I think from our side of it, one really interesting thing, one thing that matters to us is watching the KPI at the end of the day of the number of dollars that are spent on the contracts with these B2B providers eventually. When we talk about our impact, it's where are we making these connections that are making our companies better, but it's also lifting the community in an important way by adding dollars back into the B2B solution providers to the point that you made all the way at the beginning about maybe too many elbows or too much competition. And there's been, you know, Stefan and I talk about it a lot, or the people that are like-minded in our space talk about it a lot. There's been the fear of scarcity that there aren't enough resources to go around. Disability is, disabil when we know the, the stats are out of date, right? 15% is out of date of yes, the global yes. population, that we think yes, it's yes. more towards 25% of the global mm -hmm. population, that the stat about $8 trillion in global disposable income is out of date. Yes. This problem is so big and this opportunity is so huge and the possibility and the profit and all of those things are so big that I think it's gonna be faster better, bigger together than separate. And so that's the mindset of the Solution Partner Directory. It's the way that we enter this space. We're going to mess this up. We're going to fail at some points, but we want to be collaborators. Good. And that means that means you're being, you're, that means you're really being innovative because <laughs> we fail as innovators yeah. and we learn from our failures. I'll use an example, Google Glasses. I, and I had a friend of mine at Google said, don't talk about that. That's our biggest failure. I said, I don't know. I don't think you should look at it as the biggest failure because we learned a lot from the Google Glasses and now you got the Apple Glasses. Apple learned from Google. So yeah, life is about learning. Mm -hmm. It's about learning and collaborating. And I agree, we do have a scarcity model. We also, Dr. Greg Vanderheiden said this once at an IEEE conference, we have to stop eating our young because we're not a very welcoming community either. When you're coming in to be a consultant or move in, you want to make a difference for people with disabilities. People 
sometimes they're not very welcoming. So I know that I wasn't welcomed in because I was just a parent. Even though I learned like you did, Crosby, I actually am a person with disabilities. I don't know why I could never figure it out I had ADHD. All my friends knew, but... My mentor, Andy Imperardo, told me years ago, I'm just waiting for you to figure out your own diagnosis. Right, 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 right. So, yeah. So yeah. I know Neil Milliken was like, Wow, I can't believe you didn't know that, Deborah. <laughs> and and, and De Deborah, another thing that I wanted to, to touch on here, which cannot be understated, because this has been such a huge part of our of our movement and of our impact to date, is the active role that many of our companies have made or have had in pushing us forward. And Crosby, I, you know, I, I wanted to set this up where you talk about um, s some of the things that we're doing with the Iconics, who the Iconics oh. are, what, how that kind of blends into our program. Uh, but then also talking generally about through our conversations, we've been able to identify companies who are raising their hand, who may not be the Microsofts of the world, who are recognized the world over for the, the wonderful things they're doing for the disability community, but are doing wonderful things. They just want a chance to talk about it. Crosby, I don't know if, I, I hope yeah. I set you up okay. <laughs> no, I just, I think maybe it goes back to the question, Deb, that you asked at the top of the hour, are, are we just a campaign? Right. The piece that we're working under is called our transformation program, which has six pillars. It is C-suite, so all things CEO and leadership, culture, which is all things workplace, workforce. So think about your people, your policies, the buildings they work in, the, the places they work from home, how all of that feels. Customer, whether that's B2B or B2C. Research and reporting go hand in hand. So what are you asking internally? What do you know about your self-ID numbers? What do you know about your accommodations numbers? And then what are you doing with that data? How are you funding um, organizations philanthropically? And what are you doing with that data? What is your transparency level? And then representation is the last pillar, which is what does disability look like and sound within your company? So are you putting it into your marketing campaigns? Are you putting it into your executive talking points? But really we're working with our 500 companies through that transformation program. We've had 13 companies come on board. They're the only companies who've come on board with financial support. We're funded through primarily through the Nippon Foundation and seed funding from Richard Branson. But these 13 companies have come on board. It's Google and Allianz. I won't be able to run through all 13. <laughs> EY, Mahindra, P&G, BBC. You mentioned Apple, who's come on as our primary technology partner, mm -hmm. who are building solutions that align with this transformation program. So a brand audit tool, customer listening insights tool filled with disabled consumers, a media hub, so disability looks different. All of those will be released over time yeah. um, to our 500 companies so that they can begin to incorporate them. So really, truly think about, Caroline, her vision was a tipping point, that this these 500 companies are a starting place and a tipping point around disability and inclusion in a really brilliant way this model, Valuable 500, if we do what we say we can do and make these connections and make this difference, can lift up and lift out, which is part of the structure of what you do as an entrepreneur. Yeah, we're driving these conversations forward with our companies. We're hearing brilliant out early outcomes. For example, Intertech, one of our a quality um, assurance company, a risk management company, started a collaboration across the board looking at inclusive travel from end to end with Heathrow and British Airways and Airbnb and Hilton and all these companies who are coming at an angle from a business perspective. We've got companies like Logitech who are trying to tell brilliant, truthful stories around disability. We've got Auto Trader, who's at 13% of their employee base identify, self-identifying as having a disability, and it's through the messaging and the, the pieces that they've put in place. So how do you connect the Auto Trader with Company X, who's just learning and just beginning, and making sure we make Company X better because they've learned from an Auto Trader? We, we had an early roundtable with our financial services companies, and they were sharing information all the way up to proprietary. So it really is about, yeah, making us better as a whole, using knowledge, sharing knowledge, again, better, faster, bigger, together. Yeah, yeah, and it's so exciting. And I know we're creating, Rue Global Impact is creating Billion Strong, and y'all have been very supportive. Caroline has graciously agreed to be on the board when I know she doesn't have the time, but... <laughs> but it's, and that we're bringing Billion Strong together so that we can proudly, proudly come out and say, I have lived experiences with disabilities. Now, I understand that's pie in the sky, but the reality with 500 corporations and it's showing major leadership and wanting to truly include us in their workforce, and it is okay for them to expect us to be qualified for their jobs, but that's why we're creating Billion Strong because I was actually 
delighted and, and I definitely feel like I was part of the team to that to get to the valuable 500, to get those 500 companies. But now what? Because it's not fair for our community to ask corporations to figure it all out, but we're not going to tell you who we are. We're not going to work with you. We're not going to have, that's ridiculous. Companies want to include us. Now we have the valuable 500, but we have to come out and we have to support what they're doing. We have to get behind them. We have to get behind the brands that are showing the leadership with the valuable 500. And we need to make sure that we come out with pride and tell them who we are. Because 80% of people with disabilities, remember, it's invisible. You can't see them. So we're working for you already. So I love what you're doing. But how will y'all work with national groups? Because you are a global. I, I know that you and Stefan happen to be physically located in the U.S., but you're a global team. There are people all over the world. And I do want to say one more thing about Caroline. Because I know we're all very good friends with Caroline. I know, Crosby, you were friends with her before you started. But Caroline Casey is the, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And she's just funny and she's cheeky. But what some people don't know about Caroline is, I am not kidding you, she is a brilliant strategist. She is brilliant. And sometimes people don't realize how smart and intuitive she is. She's really amazing. And so she brought on these very talented individuals to help us and our community needs to get behind them. So let me turn it over to you, Crosby. Just wanted to <laughs> no, I mean, well, I and yesterday was her birthday. So happy birthday to, to Caroline. Live zero yesterday. <laughs> so, see, the Southern woman does not call out her number, but that, you know, I, I did <laughs> she did it. She did on Access Israel. That's yeah. all. <laughs> um, no, she is, she is all those things. This does not happen by, it's not a happy accident. I mean, yeah. this was years yeah. in the making. Caroline comes from business. Uh, yeah, it is because of the force that she is. And it also, Stefan, I'll, about the National Partners, I'll turn it over to you. It is also because she was collaborative. The first time I heard about the Valuable 500, it was because of Deb. I was sitting in a room of U.S. national leaders mm -hmm. who Caroline was saying, this is who we are and this is what we're trying to do and help. So right. I know that's always been her approach because it was the way that I was introduced to her. She mortgaged her house for it too, just saying. Yeah, yes, as somebody no, that's this... done all that stuff myself. Yeah, I just want to say she's definitely, you no. Know, She's definitely committed. No, she's talked <laughs> about leaving incredibly fancy route. Like she's in a room with ex business leader having whatever ex conversation might be. And then she goes to the airport and questions if she can buy a cup of coffee. Like right. this is a, her life love project. It's a passion project because she cares about moving this forward. And so when we say we want to collaborate with the national and global disability community, we mean it because this is why we turn our laptops on in the morning is to make a difference in this space. And so Crosby, when you say that, give me some examples of some of the country, you've already talked about them a little bit, or Stefan, you can jump in too, but give us some example of some groups you've already worked with. We've worked with a lot. Yeah, yeah. We, we've worked with uh, quite a few, beginning with just even as local as the UK. The Business Disability Forum is our, our folks that we greatly admire and respect. Diane Lightfoot is, is, has absolutely been Fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, collaborator and supporter of ours. Enable India, of course, Access Israel, of course. Our friends in Japan, Marairo, have been uh, uh, fantastic uh, partners as well and actually worked with you on the expert review panel. Um, the U.S., through, through Crosby and I's connections, we have a number of different friends in the U.S. Really, what we're trying to do now is actually, this is quite a timely question, because starting in 2022, we're going to roll out what we call our territory strategy, which is we understand that we're a global, we're a global organization, but we do, need, we do need local and regional representation. Because for us, and modeling after some really uh, amazing organizations who do this, like G3ICT, for example, has a globally distributed uh, a network of, of consultants everywhere who are able to respond on the ground to uh, NGOs and businesses alike who have questions about digital accessibility. That's what we're trying to emulate here. And, and so we're- on, I think they have a hundred countries. There's- I, 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 I'm very proud to be a volunteer for G3ICT, but a hundred. They, they have, they, they do amazing things to your point, Deborah. And so we're going to start, again, start small and then prove it and then build out. So we're going to start with, I think it's five territories. Is that right, Crosby? And those territories correspond to like our, our regional, you know, hot spots of where our companies are, beginning with East Asia, specifically Japan, the Middle East, specifically in, in Israel, the UK, of course. Um, uh, the U.S., Crosby and I are going to cover that. And then we're, we're, we're really going to focus on uh, expanding our networks in Europe, 
Latin America. We have uh, quite a few friends in Latin America as well. And in Africa, the reality is that while we don't have a whole lot of comp like African companies represented in the Valuable 500, we also recognize in that same breath that there are a ton of our companies who have presences there. And so not having somebody on the ground at the moment is, uh, is something that we're trying, to, we're trying to work on. So yeah, so uh, excellent question, Deb. I think we're, and that's something that we're uh, going to put in place at the end of this year, beginning of next, is identifying who those ambassadors, who, are, who are our friends on the ground who can really support in not only get, uh, spreading the word, but also running local level programs, getting companies together, convening companies to talk about you know, common issues that they may have. And so that, that's definitely going to be a key part of our strategy moving forward. And, and the thing, there's so much I love about it, which is why I always supported it. And I've been a very big supporter of it. I, I was looking at, I think on my Facebook page, I've got uh, you on there, but it, only because it makes sense to our community. It, may, it, it makes sense, but at the same time, the community has to come out and support what they're doing as well. And, and we need to learn from each other and we need to help them. We need to help them with the things they're doing. And one thing I know that we have decided, I say this nervously, but we've decided at Billion Strong, we're gonna start with two projects. I'll tell you the easy one first, because I love, I love them both. But the first project is going to be, because we, Billion Strong, are about the community of people with disabilities, which is why we're thrilled that the Valuable 500 wants to support all of our community. And so we want to do a project where we focus on children with disabilities and how they can tell their peers about their life. And so I know a lot of people, some people with disabilities, I know parents, I know individuals that did it. And Dr. LaMondre Pugh is the CEO of Billion Strong and he always did it, which of course, he would go into a new school and he would tell them who he was because he's a communicator. But we thought it would be cool to talk about that and show examples, encourage children to do it and vote on it, give prizes and awards, that would be fun. Okay, and so the second one we're doing because of Valuable 500. So this one's a really <clears throat> audacious goal. What we want to do is we actually want to, and we're starting to work on the project, and it actually was the idea of one of our board members that happens to be one of your partners that we've mentioned. It was Yuval Wagner of Access Israel. I had the idea, and then he gave me a better idea to my idea, because <laughs> I was like, oh, do it like this, and then he gave me a brilliant idea. What we're going to do is we're going to take on whether or not we should identify that we are individuals with lived experience with disabilities on our resumes, on our CVs, on our social media platforms. And we're working with LinkedIn and I'm very proud to be, have been verified yesterday on Twitter. Thank you, Twitter. Verify me, I'm a real person now. <laughs> you got a blue check, look at you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yay, it was such a little gift. But LinkedIn is doing some really interesting things with recruiters and with, um, with self-ID and things like that. So how do we tie those efforts? But we as the community cannot do this if, we, if the employers aren't gonna go with us. Mm -hmm. If the employers aren't gonna change the way they look at keywords. And we also wanna take back words that have been taken away from our community. We, the word disability sometimes is seen very negative. We wanna take back our words, like the LGBT community did when they took back their words like queer, Get. They took them back. Any words that are used to hurt that community, they actually are embracing them. That's why they have so many letters, LGBTQIA+. So we want to follow them, but we can't do it without the employers, which is why, once again, what the Valuable 500 is doing will change the world for billions of people today and ongoing. And they can't do it, though, unless we help them. Yeah. So. I'm excited about it, even though I'm actually a little nervous about taking that on because when your resume, you're not supposed to ever put personal stuff, blah, blah, blah. The world is changing. The world is changing and we're here to support you in that. I think it's incredibly important. I think there does need to be a lot of education and collaboration and conversation with employers as it moves forward. And the world was thrown upside down with COVID in 2020. Well-being became a different conversation. Being authentic in the workplace became a different conversation. How I'm happy where I sit when I work. Great resignation that's happening right 40 now. 40%, yeah, of the workforce is saying that I'm, I'm headed somewhere else or I'm at least seriously thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the time. This is the time. This is a tipping point. Yeah. This is the tipping point, And we couldn't be successful if Valuable 500 wasn't there. We, we couldn't even have begun to do this. We could, but if we don't have the employers on board, 
with what the community is trying to do, we're not going to be successful. But we as the community now nagging our community, the reality is if we don't support the valuable 500, 500 corporations that have said, okay, we want to include you at the CEO, the CEO level, we're that committed. If we don't support them and they fail, which they're not going, I, I anyway, I'm not going to nag too much, but well, we have to support them. First of all, I love that idea. I love that project. I think it's <laughs> going to be, it's, it's going to be fantastic. And it falls directly in line with some of the, the key issues that many of our companies face, especially in terms of reporting uh, and in, in terms of recruiting and hiring and, and, and retaining talent. The first big question is like, who are we hiring and do they have a, do they have a disability? And so it's interesting because your project has, it's a two-sided coin on one side. We want to make sure that companies are willing and able to hire folks with disabilities and to, and have streamlined accommodation processes and ha have all of the infrastructure in place and inclusive cultures to make sure that they retain that talent. On the other side, we have to undo millennia of mistrust and and feelings of marginalization that many folks with disabilities face who still struggle to put their hand up to say, you know what, I, I have a disability. There's a lot of fear and mistrust and social stigma. Such great points. Yeah. And Stefan, um, of course, the three of us are all located in the States. We, I already said that before, but I was speaking, we have not, we have about 50 corporations that have stepped up and said, we want to help. And we have not asked them for money because we actually think that this billion strong should be funded by the community. And so we're talking to high net worth individuals and not that corporations won't be able to participate. Of course they will. But I think our community always goes to corporations and says, give me, give me money. And we sort of wanted to do this as a community effort. But the I was talking to a corporation about this and they had brought on a few members of their ERG group, employee resource group that had disabilities. And one of, and they just coincidentally happen to all three be in the States. And there's a reason why that's important. So one of the ladies who identified herself as ha being autistic said, you know, first of all, they talked about how much they had been disenfranchised, not by their employer, by others and how hard it was. And then she said, what is Billion Strong going to do to protect us if we come out and um, admit that we have disabilities? And so I said, okay, now you're an American and I'm an American and I know what the word protection means. That means litigation, lawyers, and we are not doing that at Billion Strong. That's not who we are. We are an identity organization. We want to be proud of who we are. We want to support anyone that is supporting us. So we're not the litigation guys. And I said, and also Americans with disabilities, we gotta be brave because our brothers and sisters in other countries have it so much harder than we do. So at some point we gotta be brave and we gotta say, no, I'm gonna come out regardless. And if there are consequences, I'll go on social media and I'll talk about that. And together we'll be stronger. But all of the parts have to be put in place and all the wonderful efforts that are already there that you are finding, both with corporations and with our community. We need to continue to highlight those things, which is why I love the Valuable 500 and all the partners you brought in so early on. I know Kate Nash with My Purple Space, I love what they do with the ERGs. Yeah. I just recommended her to uh, several corporations. So I think it's really beautiful what you're doing. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, and the I, I want to come back earlier to something you said earlier about reclaiming the identity, reclaiming some language. And it's, it's interesting because I, I definitely see the linkage between what you're saying there and what, you know, the, the Billion Strong project. Again, I, I love it and I definitely want offline. Let's talk about it. But, but this is happening, but this is happening in other spaces around disability inclusion. Welcome, for example, which is a, an app that's, it's a UK based app, but I'm, I'm I want to say that they work with global brands. It's run by, by some wonderful folks. Gavin Neat is, is uh, oh, the, yeah. the, the leader Gosh, over there. And so what he has taken, uh, he and his team have taken is the concept of the sunflower lanyard, which is a controversial practice in the UK that essentially it's like an identifying badge for folks with disabilities. Okay. Um, uh, so when you go into a, a public place, you can, you know, wear this badge and people will know, okay, they're a person with a disability. Let's, we're going to have to, let's adjust our approach to them as a consumer and as, as somebody we're going to serve. This app actually allows, uh, businesses to sign up and a, a person with a disability to tell those businesses, Hey, my name is, I have this disability. This is the way I prefer to be served. Now, if you think about that equation, it, it takes all of the power of that consumer interaction and puts it in the consumer's hands. And so when you walk into a Starbucks, you can text them before you get there and say, hey, I'm Steve, I'm deaf or hard of hearing. I need, I, I hope just to let you know, um, I, 
you can read lips. And so you walk in and they already know because they got, they received that text that, Hey, okay, Steve is here. I see Steve. I see his profile photo. I know how to serve this person in a way that most that resonates with them. And in a way that makes them feel empowered, makes them feel included that, that if every business could do that in every, you know, kind of industry, that would be huge. That would be incredible. And I think it just, what you're describing with your project for billion strong is in a similar vein, right? It's claiming your identity and being like, Hey, this is actually a source of power for me because now I have the cards, right? Um, and it's up for folks like the valuable 500 and, and BDF and OD and, and all these other wonderful organizations to, to encourage businesses to fulfill their mandate which is better serving customers and certainly being more inclusive on the inside. And they want to do it. They want to do it, but it's unfair to, they're trying to do it, but they don't know where we are. Crosby, did you want to? No. Know? Yeah. Deb, I was just going to go back. Something you said about the person in the ERG, it just struck me that being at the epicenter of change is hard. <laughs> being in the trenches is hard. Using yeah. your voice is critical and it's hard at the same time, but you're right. You have to do it. And Maybe this is about to be a little bit Pollyanna or, yeah, a little bit Pollyanna and back to the conversation that we had earlier. It's also beholden on organizations like the Valuable 500 and yours and other U.S. or global-based organizations, excuse me, to get our shit together in a way that, like, that we're collaborating, that we're talking, so we're using more shared language, so we're not confusing companies. Because when we confuse companies, we're making it harder for those per those folks in the trenches that are doing the, the work on the daily, trying to tell their line manager that this is who I am and this is yes. what I need. I, like, to your point about taking language back, we need better, stronger, clearer conversations between global and national disability organizations. So we're speaking on a continuum. Like, this is my part. This is the way I enter the conversation. Deb, what you do with technology and the yes. conversations you're leading around a Billion Strong are your part on the continuum. And how do we have exactly these kind of conversations so companies can get it together because we're not making it harder on them. I know. And, and it's, and the winners are human beings. So it's, that's such a huge statement. The winners are the human, but yeah, the winners yeah. are our community. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I know I could keep you on the all day. Cause I love, well, cause you're making a difference. You're making a change. The world is different because of valuable 500 and I'm just thrilled to have been part of it. Um, so how do people find out more about, I, I know you are everywhere, but I want you to tell the audience how they can connect with you, how they can find out about Valuable 500. I know you're on social media. Yeah, I would love for folks to follow us on social media. We're about to go through, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, Stefan, a, a brand refresh that we're incredibly excited about and a Yay. website overhaul. So I would say visit us on our website, but hold off or come back in a month to see what's about to come. And then Stefan, Stefan and I are always available by email. Yeah, please, Deb. I don't know if it's possible to drop our contact info or, or, or we'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. We're always down to chat. I, I especially love to, to meet new people and to hear of what, all the wonderful ideas, innovations that are happening in the That's disability amazing. space. Yeah. And yeah. Stefan, I, I forgot. I wanted you to mention something you mentioned off air because mm -hmm. I thought it was very powerful. So I'm, I mean, just go back for one second in that. When you were talking about the expert partners, mm -hmm. you made a comment that in the future, the Valuable 500 was going to actually test. Do you remember that comment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Because I just think this is, this right here, this is who Valuable 500 is. They're walking the walk. Yeah. Okay. So part of our, you know, decision-making process with our, with our solution partners and our vendors is to assess accessibility of not just their websites, but also just look at generally how they even speak about disability when they convey themselves in public spaces. And we find that to be incredibly important because not only do we want to make sure that we are accessible across the board and we're offering accessible solutions to our companies, but it's also for all of the stakeholders within those companies, especially folks who work in accessibility, folks who may have a disability, folks who may be blind or visually impaired, deaf or hard of hearing, et cetera, et cetera, who may call upon these vendors and see that these folks are accessible. These folks take everything into account. We want, at the end of the day, the Valuable 500 wants to provide trustworthy resources, trustworthy referrals, recommendations to our companies to move their their work forward. And so this is this is partly a call also for anybody who works in the disability space to, to make sure that what you do in addition to like 
the, the work you do, how you do it needs to be accessible. And so I think it's, I think that's something that came up midway through our, through our review process. And I'm glad it did. I love it because I know that I was talking to Dr. Lamandre Pugh and he said that we are not going to accept any vendors if they're not accessible. And what we're going to do is if they're not accessible, we'll help them. We'll give them tools. We'll show them stuff, not overlay tools, but we will we'll help them be successful. We can't redo their websites for free, but we can give them tips. We can, there's all kind of wonderful data out there. But I was, I became an ambassador for a group that was focusing on the sustainable development goals. And they, re, they redid their, their website and apps. And they were showing a big group of us leaders, the new portal. And it was beautiful and amazing. And then any questions? Is it accessible? Well, no, we just didn't have time. It's expensive to do that, Deborah. And we don't think people with disability. You were talking about the sustainable development goals and it is not accessible. And it just, unfortunately, many disability organizations aren't accessible. Many accessibility organizations aren't accessible. So our community must walk the walk. We can't ask corporations to do it if we're not doing it ourselves. So kudos to you for that. I, that really warmed my heart. That shows that you care about our community because, you know, thank you. <laughs> so the website is The Valuable 500. Very easy to find it. And please, they're changing everything. Go out, support them, join them, volunteer, help because this is the way we change the world. So Crosby, thank you for being on the show today. And Stefan, thank you. And I'm really hoping y'all will come back on in a few months and could, maybe could y'all come back and give us an update? We, we'd love to. And then in the meantime, when things open back up here, Deb, we got to meet halfway. Uh, yes. so, so somewhere in Northern Virginia, maybe. I agree. <laughs> and, and, and you have a baby coming in February. So that, that is I, correct. So let's get, let's, let's get together <laughs> while, <laughs> while I'm reasonably free. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you both for your leadership. I'm so impressed. I was thrilled when I heard that you two had joined Caroline. I thought, oh, wow. So thank you for your work. Because uh -huh. my husband thanks you, my daughter thanks you, I thank you, Lamandre thanks you. It is really making a difference. So uh -huh. thank you both. And I will uh, talk to the audience later. Bye, everyone. Debra, thank you. And bye, everyone. You've been listening to Human Potential at Work, brought to you by Rue Global Impact. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you consume your audio. To learn more about Rue Global Impact and the services we provide, visit rueglobal.com. To learn more about how you can become a sponsor of Human Potential at Work, email david at rueglobal.com. That's david at rueglobal.com. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll be back next time with a new episode.